So in this question, we've got a lot of visual front matter. So let's make sense of it before we read the information. So here we've got experiment one and experiment two. That's the first thing we realize. There's two different experiments. Ball release from rest and the other one, the ball horizontally off the table. So what we can see here is then that this is a drop, 1D projectile, and this is a horizontal projectile. So we know it's going to go like this and this one's just going to drop. All right. And we remember then if they're released at the same time, they'll take the same amount of time to hit the ground. The next layer, we've got the position time for each of them. So for those graphs, we've got RGA. Any questions about position and time will be about reading. The slope is delta x over delta t, which is the velocity. And the area, x delta t meters times seconds, is nothing meaningful. So if we look at the velocity in the first one, in the first one, we see a velocity zero. Well, x versus tx is horizontal. There is no horizontal velocity because everything's vertical. In the second case, we see there's a constant velocity here that we could determine. The next graph is the y position of these. And if you look at the graphs, the scales are the same, 0, 0 to 6 seconds, and they look identical to each other. So they're identical. All right, so now, uh, by conducting two different experiments, just as we suspected from the information, they use video analysis, like pivot, get the position of time. Um, what student can they draw from the graphs? Now, this may mean that there are things that are true, but you have to be able to draw the conclusion from the graph, all right? So let's, each one of these statements we want to break into clauses. So the horizontally rolled ball travels a greater horizontal distance. Let's see if that's true. Well, let's see. The dropped ball has no horizontal distance. So that looks like it's true. The released ball travels with a slower speed. A slower speed. Well, that is actually true, it turns out. And it's true because this one's velocity that it has at any moment time, it has to do with, to the, with the acceleration. The horizontal projectile has all the same vertical velocities as this, plus it has a horizontal component, which means the overall is larger. So it does travel more slowly. It's a true statement. Both balls have zero horizontal acceleration. That is also true. Since the balls have the same vertical position at any given time, is that true? That is also true. Now we can go back to the second. So there's none we can eliminate based on the first part. It takes a longer amount of time to reach the ground. That is false. So a slower speed takes a longer time to reach the ground well that's actually not true they reach the ground at the same time so it's not because it has a slower speed it's because it's traveling only vertically um, they reach the ground at the same time have zero horizontal acceleration well it's true but that's not why so it looks like d is going to be our answer so they're the same vertical position at any given time, they reach the ground at the same time. And that, of course, is true. C looks like it's going to be plausible, um, but it's not because they have zero horizontal acceleration. You could have dropped this one from a different height. They both have the same horizontal acceleration. That's not really the reason. The answer is D. We have another situation in our next question. Um, it's thrown at initial speed near the earth. Air resistance is negligible. All right. <clears throat> and the gravitational field is constant. If it's thrown horizontally, the direction and magnitude of its acceleration while in the air will be, well, downward, we know, not upward. The acceleration is never upward when it's about gravity. It's going to be downward, and it's going to be constant, just like we, we think we've had a question very similar to this before. Horizontally, the downward and constant acceleration. It's not deceleration. Gravity is the acceleration, and gravity isn't changing, so it's not decreasing, not increasing. So we've got a cliff 20 meters high, thrown horizontally, initial speed of 10 meters per second. Air resistance, the distance to the base of the cliff where the rock hits the level ground, is most nearly. So this is a case where we could do a quick average velocity table, time 0, 1, 2. And let's see, our acceleration is minus 10, 
and then we've got our instantaneous velocity, which is zero minus 10 minus 20. Now, what about this 10 meters per second? Well, this is vertical that we're doing. The horizontal velocity has nothing to do with how long it takes. And then we've got our cumulative average velocity, which is meaningless, minus five and minus 10. And then we've got our displacement, which is average velocity times the time. So zero minus five minus 20. So we can see it's going to take two seconds two seconds to impact because the ground is at minus 20. And so if it, and it's traveling 10 meters per second, in one second it'll be 10 meters, in two seconds it'll be 20 meters. So it'll be 20 meters from the base of the cliff. Question four. So we have the marble thrown up in the air, releasing it short height and catching it at the same height. Um, which one is a correct graph of y versus time as it moves up and then comes down? So we have the ball thrown upward. It's going to be released at this height. It's caught at the same height. At some point, it's going to reach a maximum <clears throat> before it comes down. So if we're looking at the graph of ZT, it's going to start at a particular height. It's going to return to the same height. It will reach a higher height. And since it's the RGA, the position time, the things will read off the graph, the slope is delta z over delta t, which is the velocity. If it looked like this, that means the velocity is constant, which we know is not true. We know the velocity is decreasing. So if we look at this, this scenario, this shows a big slope, a lesser slope, and ultimately an even smaller slope, and that's why a curve that looks like this is not correct. That shows increasing slope. So we're looking at a graph that looks like this, and due to symmetry, it'll look like that as well. So that's why it's choice B. And none of the others can possibly be correct. So next we have an object thrown with a horizontal velocity of 20 meters per second from a cliff that's 125 meters tall. How long does it take to hit the ground? Well, this thing is going to be in free fall. The fact that this is 20 meters per second is not irrelevant. So we could do an average velocity table. Zero uh, time, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and an acceleration of minus 10, which stays the same. Instantaneous velocity, zero minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50. Cumulative average velocity is meaningless there. Minus five, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, minus 25, and then average the uh, uh, position is the average velocity times the time. So 0 minus 5 minus 20 minus 45 minus 80 minus 125. So we think it'll be 5 seconds. Now we could also do this by using our position equation. 1 half at squared plus v0t plus z0. We have 1 half minus 10 t squared. Initial velocity 0, initial position 0. And we want to know when this equals minus 125 equals 1 half of minus 10. I'll just multiply those together right off the bat. So we have a minus 5, minus 5 t squared. Divide both sides by minus 5, and t squared is 25, and t is 5 seconds. So notice this method ends up being a lot faster, but it, and it works only because, it works only easily because the initial velocity is 0. The average velocity table, if we as we sit down to a test, dump the average velocity table. Well, it's already done, and we'd uh, be able to answer the question right off the bat. So we can see five seconds is our answer. And lastly, um, we got a, uh, we've got a graphs here, and so we'll look at the graphs first to make sense of those. VT, 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 VT. So the things we can do are read, gradient and the area. We can read velocity and time. The gradient is delta v over delta t, which is the acceleration, and the area is v delta t, which is meters per second per second, time seconds, or meters per second, time seconds, <laughs> which is meters. So that's the displacement. All right, so now uh, it's, it's released from rest from a height h, like so. b is thrown downward from the same location. Um, at the same instant, all right, they're thrown. So what we know is B 
in that first second is going to have a greater average velocity. It's going to speed up by the same amount, but it already has an initial velocity. So it's going to travel fa farther in that first second. And what's not obvious is in the next second, it will also be traveling on average faster. So it will get even further ahead of A. So let's see what the, which one is of speed versus time is correct for the two objects. Well, B has a starts at time zero. At time zero, A, A has an initial, since it's dropped, V0 equals zero. So we need to look for an A where V0 is zero. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. So all of them remember from an A perspective. B perspective... has a greater average speed. Now, one of the things to be thinking about here is that we think about these as being downward, having a downward velocity. But the question is about speed. So in the beginning, B has a greater speed. So at time zero, it has a greater value of V. B says same, or choice A is the same. B is greater, it looks like that's our answer. This one says that this one has a greater acceleration. This slope, A slope and B slope are different, saying they have different acceleration, which is not true. Gravity is what's causing them to accelerate, so that's out. The same thing for B, different accelerations, different slopes. And B says that it, at time zero, it would have had a negative speed, which is not possible. B also says that it had a speed of zero, at some time after A did. So this is at like time two seconds, B had a speed equal to zero, which also doesn't make any sense. So we're back to um, choice B.